Passionate Pursuit Spirit and Mind podcast. On today's episode, Purpose and Transitions, we have a wonderful guest in the studios who will be sharing insights on her life and her transition into purpose. She's an accomplished and experienced insurance and risk management professional, currently serving as the CEO of iRisk Management Limited. I'm privileged to have in the studios with us Sheila Rizbeek, a very good friend and a distinguished and powerful man of God. Sheila, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Emma. Yeah. Um, on today's episode, like I already mentioned, uh, purpose and transitions, we do understand that a life without purpose is a life not worth living. Um, everybody's supposed to find and you know, implement and accomplish what God has for them in living or existing in life. They only say you can actually begin to live when you actually find and discover purpose. Purpose in itself is not a place, a title, or position, but it is a series of a life lived in the world of God for one's life. So, in purpose transitions today, we, I am one I've witnessed um, through your life um, a powerful testimony where God has taken you from one place into another and fulfilling purpose in your life in this particular season. And I'm very excited because I'm happy that we get to share this so that anybody who listens to this conversation, anybody who wants to know how to navigate their purposes and transitions to get to the place that God has ordained and designed for them. I pray that this conversation will be that opener and that light that would take away in darkness to help them clearly make the decisions they need to make to go to move. So Sheila, I just want to add, I also don't know you in the context of what we're discussing. Who is Shilai's Okay. Um, first of all, I'll say that I identify as a child of God. That's my first calling. Um, my, co- my first calling is not to be um, a business leader or anything else, but to be a child of God. But um, it so happens that uh, God has put me in a very unique place and I'm currently uh, leading an insurance brokerage firm in Ghana and I've been also, uh, I also um, work a little bit in advocacy. I founded a women leadership um, platform where we help women in insurance get into leadership positions within their companies. But uh, my first identity is in a job. It's beautiful you say that um, because I think that um, one of the first questions that that was answered is who am I? It's who am I? And identity is a major role in purpose because you need to know who you are. You need to understand um, the intricate design and the way you've been fashioned. So you know what you've been fashioned for and where you actually fit so you can actually play your role the best of, of the best way you can. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited you see that you are first um, a child of God. How has that reality shaped your thoughts and your mindset in becoming the woman that you are today? Okay. I think, um, let me take it back a little bit to think about what you just said. Um, who you are, that's one of the first questions you ask yourself, who am I? If you identify yourself by material things or you identify yourself by association with a certain company or a certain group of people or a certain season in your life, it makes it once that all seasons are transitioning. So once you transition from that season into another season, sometimes you lose yourself. Because um, when it comes to most of us as Christians, we tend to identify ourselves by the blessings that God has put in our lives. So we make the journey a destination for ourselves where assuming you, um, let's say you're working in a certain place, you identify yourself as this person in that place. Or if you belong to a certain family, you identify yourself as being a child of maybe this family, a member of that family. Mm -hmm. Or it could be anything at all. But if we use these things which are not permanent to really um, determine who we are, these things can go away, it can be taken away from us. Mm -hmm. So then it makes it difficult for you to really, you always be like, um, you never really find your place. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to 
for me, my identity as a child of God. It makes me know that no matter what, because God is the only one who is, who was, who is, and is to come. He's the only permanent thing that I can stand on. Like, he's an anchor. So no matter what, whether things are, things are going well, which they will and which they do because we've been blessed by every good thing, every spiritual blessing, or things are going bad, mm -hmm. I know that I am a child of God and that is my identity. So it doesn't, the storms, obviously sometimes you question a lot, but then it still makes you, a bit, it makes you grounded because you know that you serve a living God. And even if it comes to the point of death, then that is his purpose for your life and you will die knowing that you went down with God and through your death, his purpose will be fulfilled. So, oh. That's very powerful and I love the way you actually expounded on that because it's so true that if you sort of build the foundation of identity on things that are transient, you realize that they become um, a form of chasing shadows and you always keep losing yourself like you said. That the permanent core that um, gives an identity that lives in this life and even in eternity has been anchored on the foundation of identity in Christ Jesus and in God. So I'm so I, I'm so excited about that. And because more importantly because this identity plays a very important role in purpose and transitions. We see that clearly in Joshua and which will actually be the anchor scripture and our basis of our discussion today. Because we see that um, there's so many lessons that we glean from Joshua's life and how in transitioning from serving Moses, one of the most powerful leaders in Israel, and I mean really big shoes to fill in terms of his um, Moses. The Bible says, I mean, in all of Israel, there was no one compared to Moses. I mean, if I was Joshua, I'd probably be like, God. How am I? I probably would just. Yeah, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do with this? Like Moses has done it all. He's seen God's back, <laughs> and he's basically he's been walking with God every day. Yes. Yeah. He's seen it all. He's done it all. So what is this? Uh, I think that even as we we're discussing these things, we did realize that leaders change, but God's yes. purpose remains the same. Exactly. Exactly. And so we enter because we are. In a season of life where we need to fulfill what God is doing, and then we exit for somebody else to enter, to still continue and be steadfast in what God wants to do. So that in itself even gives us a mindset and uh, the posture with which we even embrace leadership and purposes and transitions. Because yeah. the first idea is that the plan is not about you. Yes, yes, it's never about you. It's about God and what yes. God wants to do. Yes. And so it's more or less you're being given a blueprint, a script. You're supposed to understand and how you're supposed to play that out. Yes. Making sure that you're running this assignment and you're transitioning smoothly to it. I want to ask this question because everybody sees the glamour of the leader. Everybody sees the, you know, the accomplishments and the achievements of the leader. But I do realize that even in um, the account of Joshua, God keeps saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. What is it like to be in the wilderness season of a transition from one place to another in the will of God? Um, so the thing is that when God chooses you to do something or sets you um, his purpose in your heart he never quite tells you mm -hmm. how it's going to end up right. so you only know that you've been called to do this right. and but then most of the time it kind of ends there mm -hmm. so you don't even know the how the when the how long you're going to be in that transition season mm -hmm. you don't even know what he's training you for mm -hmm. so half of the time it's, and I think that God does that to build our trust in him so that it doesn't become about the destination right. but it becomes the journey that you are taking with him right. or you are he's taking you through but the thing is as we are we are human and like little children we always want to know, to know like where is the destination it's yeah. like 
going somewhere with okay. maybe your parents, yeah. this is the first thing you're going to you keep asking, are we there, are we there? And you keep, you think the journey is so long, but when mm -hmm. you get there, you're coming back home, then it's always, the journey is always shorter. Yeah. And you're wondering like, ah, but, but time never changed. If it's a two hour journey, mm -hmm. is that same two hour journey you're going to do, or maybe even longer because this time everyone is tired. Mm -hmm. But in your mind, it seems short. Mm -hmm. So that wilderness season or that transition season, it's a very, I think that it's just a season of trust and total dependence in God. I can, on hindsight, I can say this, but I know that when I was going through it, and I'm still going through it, mm. I never, for now, now I, I, I trust. But even with that, you're trusting in the midst of so many storms and everything. And it makes you sometimes wonder that, did you even hear from God on this? Or are you really hearing his voice? And when is he going to step in? Mm -hmm. But the thing really is, it's just the trust. For instance, let's go back to the story of um, Joshua. When it came to, um, when they were going around the wall, so it was really a thing of trust. Their first military battle was not, uh, in the promised land, was not something that they had to go and fight. Joshua was a, he was a military leader, so you would think that God will arm him and let the angel go and then, no, all they were doing was going around singing. How do you, how is that your first battle? But the walls of Jericho came down. Yeah. So sometimes, like, you can never understand God, you can never quite really know what the journey is taking you But personally, I think that that journey was a journey of trust. Will you trust me when you feel stupid? Would you trust me when I'm telling you to do something that just doesn't make sense? And it was, that was their first lesson before the rest they started fighting. So um, that's what I have on the <laughs> that's wilderness beautiful. journey. That's beautiful, Sheila. Um, the Bible says that trust in the Lord with all of your heart and be not on your own understanding, that in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. It means that you, the first point you are trusting, the direction of the path is actually the last, the last line in the yes, sentence. No, so it's like, yeah, yeah. trust in the Lord. Trust. Path. And lean not on your own. So abandon any idea of what you think of the how. Exactly. Uh, 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 Premeditated ideas of, or maybe somebody else's path was this way. So maybe mine should also look like this. Yes, abandon yes. all that. Yes. Then I will direct. Yes, yes, exactly. So it's very beautiful, and I like that you actually mentioned because Joshua was, I mean, he he understood the strategies of military uh, wars and stuff, and then he told me to go and sing and dance around the wall and Jacob <laughs> walls come, come tumbling down. Mm -hmm. But that's powerful. So thank you so much for um, bringing more light to, to that. Let's talk about, because you mentioned something very important, but you said trust. And I see that in the wilderness period, you're building trust and there's also a very key um, event happening where you're developing character because you do realize that um, God is more interested in the character of the leader yes, yes. because purpose in itself is becoming someone and we're becoming we're becoming like Jesus exactly. we are moving from transitioning from one level of obedience and glory unto another level and the entirety of us is that we are going to become sons who reflect the image and the glory of our father and so you see that the development of character is paramount in yes. the entire transition and purpose yes so much that we just want to reiterate that so if you've always been thinking of purpose and just oh what god is doing with me um, we also want you to start thinking what God is doing in me mm, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. now you realize that, oh, I'm more patient now, mm. I'm more understanding now, yes. I, I'm, I'm growing in wisdom and understanding, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm growing in, 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 in my ability to, to, to suffer long and to, and to shepherd the people mm. to a distant place. And because you realize that when, when, when the Lord ever visited Moses, he said, I've heard the cry of my people. So it was like, I'm here because of a certain people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's always it's about making you feel about the people. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. 
And so and now, I, but I need someone mm -hmm. to go and then tell them on my behalf. Yeah. So the little character in, in Pepper Central's transitions, what I know about my personal life is, if you don't pass the exam of character, you're, you're not going anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't know if yeah. those who can actually relate. Yes, yes. So yes, it's like yes, you keep yes. pass, you keep doing the same test over in, in different situations. Yeah, yeah. You keep seeing the same so in different they're like, okay, but the day you actually pass that test, then some door just opens. Yes. yes. So in character development, what would you say are the things that you you can when you in hindsight you see that these were things that God needed to you know bring you to or develop in you prior to any role or any accomplishments you were able to to actually achieve. Thank you. Okay. I think you mentioned something very important. You said that when God um, spoke to Moses the first time, the burning bush, he told him that I've heard the cry of my people, mm -hmm. and every time we are also. Um, when it comes to the New Testament, Jesus, he kept there, places where he said, and he was moved to, with compassion towards the people. There are a lot of times, it's, it's always about Jesus feeling the, the uh, having a feeling of compassion for the people. And I think that as a leader, your first ministry is to God, and your second ministry is to the people that he has given you. It's, it's, it, leadership is about service. Mm -hmm. So I think that for me, the first thing that God taught me was empathy mm -hmm. for people, like how to actually embrace, like understand people. And for it was a big lesson for me because prior to my current role, which I've been in for quite some time, I was, um, I was working in another company, a big firm, and over there, um, prior to that, I had just been someone who, by the grace of God, I think I was doing very well in everything I do. So mm -hmm. I never quite understood when people say they don't understand something or they can't get something done. I just thought people were being lazy because why mm -hmm. just do it? And God has to had to practically break me mm -hmm. and take me through the point where I was now doing the most. Like I put in all the hard work and I don't get a promotion. Then I'm like, I was closing at 11, 12 every single mm -hmm. day. Like I go to work. I have clients, like I'm serving them, and then it doesn't translate into actual like results for me. So it, can, it had to bring me to a point where I write exams, I don't pass. Mm -hmm. And I, before that, I'd always thought, oh, but you just studied and pass. But now I'm even looking at stuff and I'm reading, and I don't understand. So it just, he had to bring me to a point where he broke me mm -hmm. to understand when people are going through things, when people are having maybe personal issues, when people are just studying it's not working like because now i've been there so i can empathize and i think that that was the first thing that us i had to learn to become who i am today another thing that i think i had to learn was service i used to be very self-centered it's about if i get it done <laughs> i don't care about like I, I didn't care about people generally but he was taking to me to a place where i would now have to become a leader and not only a leader but at, at this point in my life he's even made me a mother onto people right. so i have to actually attend to their needs in a certain way yeah. so i have to deeply care about the things they care about and be ready to even sacrifice mm -hmm. so that they will be fine and i think that these are things that Unfortunately, in the African context, because of the way we see leadership, it's about authority, it's about power, it's about who gets it all. Mm. So it makes it very difficult for us to see the service side of the leadership. But Jesus Christ, he washed the feet of his disciples. So it's about the little things, it's about serving those that you've been called to lead. So you lead from the front, you lead from the back. You lead as when it comes to telling people what they have to do. Jesus used to tell, he was strict yes, with them. He yes. tells them as it is. Yes. Joshua tells, um, um, Moses was telling people things as they yes. are. But there's also another side where when people, the, the Israelites were sinning and then Joshua, uh, at the point Jesus, uh, I think twice or maybe three times, God said, you know what, these people are too stubborn. They are yes. stiff neck. I'm going to smite them. Yes. Then I will raise you and make you a mighty nation. So now that promise was going to be destroyed. And Moses was going to be the mighty nation. But he begged for yes. them. He said, yes. God, don't do this. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. If you're not there to serve, after all, 
there was a time that he was even telling God to kill him because the Israelites were just too much yes, for him. Yes, yes. Yeah, so he, at that point, he was saying, you know what? Kill them, kill them and, and then like, me, me, me and my children. Then yes. I said, listen to me. But this being million Israelites are giving me the love. And you know, when you read accounts, they just seem so stubborn. I'm like, really? what's yes. wrong with these people? Have they not seen the hand of God? The people you serve will not always listen to you. They will be stubborn, but you have to have that heart. I think that some of the most important traits that leaders should have is that heart of service towards the people. How will you mention this? I think we did that extensively on service, I think, in the Woman and the Gift. So if you haven't watched that episode, please do. Um, because the heart and the place of service is so fundamental in any purpose and any transitions for anybody. Why? Because in service first god hides you god prepares you and he develops you in ways unimaginable and every great leader has had moments of wilderness in service in preparation and you realize that they're not just waiting in wilderness doing nothing a purpose of transitions um when you said god had to break you I mean, Bogan is such a beautiful place to be in God. It is. It's yeah. such a beautiful yeah. place to be in God because you realize that sometimes even accepting what the purpose is can take years. Yes. <laughs> it yes. can take years because sometimes we are so focused on what we want to do. Mm. Yeah. We have a plan. Oh, when I get to this, I have a plan for at 30, <laughs> at 40, 40, 40, 40 like, like 25. Because <laughs> you have like, and you are like, this is it, like, this is the way it's supposed to yeah, go. Yeah. And then, I'm sure God is just sitting in heaven with his arms like, oh, my child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my it's child. Only you, you, only you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in those moments that when we are broken, you know, um, and our hearts are softened, then in the place of humility, we are able to, you know, embrace and receive um, God's purpose and plan for our lives. Yeah. And when we let go of what we have, what we we are so determined to fulfill, then um, God gives us something better. Yes. And something more wonderful yes. than we even thought um, we could or even imagine for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The Bible says yes. that um, even you wicked fathers and mothers, you know how to give good gifts to mm -hmm. your children. How much yes. more the Heavenly yes. Father. And so any plan, every purpose, Always know that God's, God's plan is the best. Yes. It's superior to any plan you can think for yourself. Yeah. Because the Bible says his thoughts are higher than and his ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. So I think I just want to emphasize that. In transitioning, okay. Um some people say, I want to know my purpose, I'm praying, I'm not hearing, I'm not seeing anything. You know, what is my purpose like? How do I even know? I, I want to talk about transitioning like the descent descendant. How do you know? Oh my goodness, I'm actually in a preparation season of my life. Oh, it's almost time. This season is about opening, or this season is actually closing. Because you know there are times where God might say, you know what, go to school. Or you know what, start taking your studies seriously. Mm -hmm. Take this extra course. Yeah. Maybe you're lacking in a particular skill, or a certain mindset or thinking on a particular job, in a particular place, yeah. then you realize that there are opportunities now to actually study a particular thing. Because God is always going to change a man's mindset before he takes him anyway. Mm. That one. <laughs> that one. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and mind transformation or mindset shift only come by the renewing of the mind. And it comes by reading or taking out the old and putting in the new. And so, how you see yourself, and what you know, and how long you know it, are things that have to be in place to be able to successfully navigate transitions into purpose. Yes. So I want to be asking, how do I know? How do I even know that I'm actually in a transition period? Yes. And how do I make sure that I don't miss a Kairos moment or an opportunity that maybe this is this is actually my chance. This is where God is actually giving me to. When it comes to the topic of purpose, it's something that 
almost everyone, like, we all want to know why am I here on earth? Like, so that type of question, like, why am I here on earth? Am I here for just myself? Am I here to accomplish something big? Like, you really want to know why you are here. So that desire is mostly, in, it's normally in most people. But how do you even know whether you should go left or right? And these decisions, like, every single day, you are making multiple decisions that could make your life either go this way or that way. Yes. Even something, at the time that you are writing BEC, when you get to SSC, you are choosing your course, that could sometimes change your life forever. Yes. But you've made a, pur a purpose call sometimes. The university, where you go to your university, can change your life forever. Because whether you stay in the States, whether you go to the States <laughs> or you <laughs> stay in Ghana, could practically change your life. Yes. So it's like, how do I know that? I am walking in my purpose, or how do I even know my purpose at all? I would say that this is something that, for me, for a very long time, I struggled with it. Because mm -hmm. I knew that I'd been called for some, from a very young age because of certain prophecies and certain things that happened. Mm -hmm. But for a very long time too, I was struggling because I didn't even know what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I just know I'm supposed to do something, but what is that thing? Mm -hmm. God does not just tell you what it is, but I think that it's revealed through, you said something about transformation, I would say consecration and transformation. Mm -hmm. Like, if you are not consecrated unto God, if you are walking under the banner of the devil, <laughs> you will not hear God's will for your life. You will not hear God's purpose for your life. I can say this now because I've been there. You know, most of us, not that we are sinners, but we are not focused on God. We are, we are used to living comfortably. Right. But the thing is that that purpose for your life, if you've been called to greatness, the devil knows that you've been called to greatness. And evil is battling against you every single day. Mm -hmm. So if you are just living the good life, it's not good life actually, it's a very <laughs> terrible life. But if you are just living life as it is, you wake up in the morning, you say, oh God, thank you for today. Then you get up, you go to work, you read your Bible, da, da, da. you come back, come and sleep, do that, and Sunday you go to church. Mm -hmm. Oh, you will really, 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 really sometimes be doing well. Like, like you will live a normal life, but you will not live your purpose-driven life until you consecrate and dedicate yourself, mm -hmm. every aspect of your life to God and tell that God, take me break me mm -hmm. like change me change my heart transform me i am dedicating myself to you mm -hmm. i'm a living sacrifice to be honest if you don't do that you will not find your purpose mm -hmm. i wish it would be an easier way i'll say oh <laughs> read my purpose purpose your life, life. <laughs> or you have to give your life mm -hmm. totally and wholly to god or you will not find your purpose in life like it's sad, but that's just what it is. <laughs> no, it's powerful you said that. I didn't want to catch you, but this is really beautiful. Um, where the Bible says we should offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. And I think that we we don't really take the word sacrifice into its true context. But um, when something's being sacrificed, the thing's actually being put to death. You're literally exactly. dying. Yeah. If I if I if I you are dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, Jesus said something that was so key. Said, Until um, a bit of corn falls, mm -hmm. a grain of corn falls to the ground until it dies. Yes. It cannot, you know, shoot up to bring bear all the wonderful things that. So you can even feed. It can feed so an entire family of beautiful mm -hmm. corn. And yes. so there's a dying element. Yeah. To self, which is I think what she actually is talking about consecration because. Consecration demands, you know, that you are totally committed, dedicated. You are not, um, you 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 are not half and half when you're yeah. dealing with Look God. More. Look like, more, yeah. you're not because um, hearing God and staying in God's presence. Please, this is a clarion call. If maybe you're you're asking that and you're still, you know. Some days you are reading the word of God, some days you, you're not. We're encouraging you, okay? Yeah. Because to find purpose, you can only find it in God. Mm -hmm. And finding it in God, you need to be consistent with your word. You need to be consistent with your prayer life. 
You need to surround yourself with a community of people who are like-minded, who are also living out purpose and are living out and also seeking God. These are ways and these are channels in which you'll be receiving different anecdotes of who you are and yeah. what you're supposed to do. In one time, you probably will be reading the word of God and a word just jumps at you and you're like, wow, this is actually me. It's actually speaking to me. Yes. Or you could actually be in prayer and the Lord is going to mention the name of a restaurant and it's like, oh my goodness, you've always wanted to own a restaurant or you want to actually go into cooking school. Or if you've been in a community of like-minded people with different giftings and service and you realize that they, through them, God could reach out to you and send a particular decision to me. I like that she actually mentioned how I've got some decisions and choices where because we are we are actually some of our life's decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the totality of all decisions we made, right yeah. up from yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure, for some of us, maybe your parents were doing that for you, maybe up until 25, 20. Then yeah. after that, it's like now you yeah. have to yeah. on your yeah. own and now you have to own all those decisions and yeah. you realize that, oh my goodness, I'm not actually taking decisions for myself and I need to be responsible. For the consequences of those decisions as well yeah. but the good news is we have an advocate the holy spirit he says that he will be with us with this place of truth and he will reveal he will reveal jesus he will reveal the word he will reveal it to us and he will bring us to remembrance of his word yes. but you need to have the word so you can be reminded of it yes so i yes. think i think that was a very beautiful thing you shared with us to finalize we don't suggest have a sense of appreciation for purpose and transitions yeah. and in seeing your life and any young lady any young man out there who's probably seen you on the internet read about mm -hmm. you uh, or seen or watched the numerous awards you've been given what are the lessons that are not open to everybody that anybody listening to this message today mm -hmm. can carry with them and now we can be a way they can run with for life and they can depend on who that these are ways that stand true and remain true to them in also helping them navigate um, their purpose and transitions to what God wants them to and become. I would say that the first thing is probably pray and seek mm -hmm. God as if you're not going to be putting any hard work. Like, mm -hmm. make that your very paramount thing, like seeking the face of God. And the second thing is that work as if you've never prayed about it mm -hmm. so it has to be if you want to walk in the fullness of your purpose mm -hmm. sacrifices have to be made on the altar and then in your work as well mm -hmm. and i think that one sometimes i wish i'd done some things earlier in life but the holy spirit helps to redeem us yeah. so because i think that for me one of the things that i used to neglect a lot was the spiritual part of my life mm -hmm. so i think i went through so many struggles and times of depression so on the outside everything is looking good but then i come home every day and i'm just like i'm tired like mm -hmm. i don't even know i can't see where i'm heading to mm -hmm. so everyone is saying oh this person so until personally i came to the point where i was like ruthless about putting God first mm -hmm. like no matter what like I I had to come to a point where I said you know what this is not what your purpose because at first I was thinking oh I'll be this I'll be that blah, blah, blah. now I know that it was never about me from the beginning it's always about being about God's mm -hmm. purpose and I'm only being used as one of the players mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things so mm -hmm. we have to also like take yourself as an equation and make it about God mm -hmm. and he will provide everything when you even go to the scripture I think Joshua chapter 1 there was a part where he was saying that I will do the I will the thing is that the battle is not yours yes. it's the Lord's mm -hmm. and the, your purpose we see the physical side of things it's good to see the spiritual side too but there's a spiritual side so mm -hmm. if and the thing is once it's established in the spirit it will manifest in the physical yes. so if you're not doing that side of things and you're just doing the physical side sometimes even you know some of us our prayer points and everything we think about even the devil can answer it for us because you just want to be i want to be rich i want to make a million the devil can give you that money it's not a big deal so it means it should be an eternal purpose it should be about the lives you're touching not about you having material the material things they are there 
it's not difficult. You don't even need to go through a process to get it. That's why people go to shrines and then the next thing you know, yeah. they come out with 10 million. Mm -hmm. You know, and even the devil tried to uh, tempting Jesus in such a way. Yes. When he after he fasted, the devil came and came and told him, I'll give you this, this, yeah. this. Without the sacrifice, yes. without the journey. Yes. Jesus could have just had everything. But then he said it is written, it is written, it is written because he had the word. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the word and you are walking, you can be blessed by the devil with curses and you think that oh i'm driving this car i'm married to this person i'm doing this but you haven't gone through transformation and transition and the consecration that god wants you to go through to really put you where you're supposed to be and his timing is always god's timing dear sometimes we are all like <laughs> This time in, that's like, that, hey, so can you just, just tell me, like, I can we not do this? But his time in. So, <laughs> so it's true. Um, I think the waiting seasons can be heavy. Yeah. It can be heavy on all of us because um, we can't, I mean, you can't question God, or oh, this is too late or this is too early, but we know that. Time you know, so I even think it's too early. I'm sure Joshua was thinking, hey, am I ready to film most of issues? Have I learned enough? <laughs> have I learned yeah, enough? So actually, because yes. I think I thought it was too early when I got what you mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then, to be honest, this is time. God determines when yeah. you are ready. So it's not always the latest, yes. but not the is there. Yes. Then you say, uh, even Moses thought it was too early. He was like, I can't speak. And he was given excuses. The excuses. Yeah. As to why, why, no, not me. And yeah. That's why it's it, 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 not to be afraid. Because no, he's always said, do not be afraid. Like, in, you realize that the things God said, He kept repeating them all. Oh. <laughs> yes. Like He knows that, so He yes. kept repeating. Yes. Do not be afraid. Yeah. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think find God being very repetitive in areas that He knows that are maybe our major weaknesses or places that we are not quite developed. So yeah. He's like He just keeps repeating that. Look, this is how I see you. This is how. This is what I know you can do. This is the abilities I have put in you. So yeah, yeah. just look on the other side of here and you see all the wonderful possibilities that I have placed in you. I think I'm, I have been blessed by this conversation, Sheila. I have been blessed. It's, it's been amazing. <laughs> I think this has been powerful. And I think that uh, one of the beautiful things light has come to many. And people have been set free to be able to freely, you know, navigate their purpose and transitions. I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful that you came. Thank you. So guys, thank you so much for spending your time with us. And I hope that you learned a thing or two on how to navigate your purpose and transitions. Uh, if you have any suggestions or questions, you leave us any comments and we will sure answer them for you. God bless you for watching. Thank you. God bless you.